It's a pleasure that we have you watching Health Pot at this particular time. I know it is Good Friday. All of us are excited when, you know, everyone is up and down preparing for Easter. But before Easter, before you eat that meat on Easter, this message is important. Thank you so much for loving and watching Health Pot. This program is brought to you by Makele University School of Public Health, together with Church of Uganda Family TV. Edwin Austin Mukhalas is my name. And we are delighted to have um, Makere Lung Institute on board the whole of this month. We are looking at asthma. We are here to answer all the questions you have on asthma. And I believe by the end of this month, many of your questions will be answered. Yes, I'm glad that some of you have started sending feedback that you need more and more information about asthma. Yes, it's the reason Dr. Rebecca Nantanda is here with us from Makere Lung Institute, going to take us through how asthma presents. But before uh, we get into the topic, Doctor, kindly greet these viewers and then we shall go on. So good evening to you all viewers. As um, Edwin has said, my name is uh, Rebecca Nantanda. I'm a pediatrician and I work with Makere University Lung Institute. And at the Lung Institute, our business is looking at lung health. We do research in lung health. We treat people with lung health problems. We also have educational programs like this one today, where we educate the population or healthcare workers about asthma, how to manage it, how to improve the outcomes of children with asthma. Because I'm a pediatrician, this evening I'm going to specifically focus on asthma in children. Yes, that is very important because uh, I believe when we when asthma is 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 uh, diagnosed earlier, I think the better for a child exactly. before it it becomes worse in the body. Because last uh, last week after the show, yes. someone sent a, a message and asked that uh, her child was diagnosed with asthma, and after some time they had. And they, they diagnosed with uh, bronchial inflammation. Could this be as a result of the asthma or it is brought by some other? Okay, so bronchial inflammation is mm. something that is going on within the lungs when somebody has the disease we call asthma. Mm. In simple terms, I want to show something. Asthma means that this disease is affecting the small tubes within the lungs mm. and they look like this, so you are able to breathe in and out. Normally. Normally. Mm. When somebody has asthma, it means that the inside of these tubes overreacts to things like cold, like dust, perfumes. And when it overreacts, then it becomes red. Mm. And it also becomes narrow. This is what we call bronchial inflammation. Okay. So that is a process that is going on within the lungs mm. of somebody who has asthma. So this means if asthma is uh, diagnosed early and... Uh, seen early in someone, detected earlier, then they can be helped not to get the bronchial inflammation. Exactly. So when we are, as you listen at some other point, when we are treating, we are targeting this overreaction, which brings about the inflammation. So if somebody is not diagnosed early and given the correct treatment, that means this inflammation will keep going on and on, and in the process it damages the child's lungs. So by the time they grow to become adults, mm then they are at risk of even developing other diseases beyond asthma. So it's very important, like you say, that that child is diagnosed early, we treat, in which case we are going to control this irritability, or which we call inflammation, so that then, then they are okay, they don't have the symptoms to suffer, but at the same time we are preventing diseases in the future. Okay. Well, uh, Dr. Rebecca, today we want to look at how asthma presents um, the various ways in which asthma presents because different people have different uh, reactions but today I want you to help us know that when I see this then I might be at risk of asthma okay thank you Adrian and uh, we are talking about children so yes. I want to emphasize the fact that asthma presents in very many different ways in children mm. the most common way which people know is when you have your child starts getting a cough then they start getting breathing difficulties. Sometimes they have a noise, which we call wheezing, and then mm. you have to run to hospital. That is asthma, and it means that person has an attack of asthma. But the other more difficult um, types, which parents don't easily recognize, and therefore they delay to come to seek care, especially if the only problem is cough. 
there are some children when their only problem is cough and this cough mainly happens within the night mm. so you have to wake up the child is coughing towards early morning the child is coughing during the day they're okay they are playing until the night comes in Sometimes the symptoms are happening in the night, the cough, the wheezing, and the difficulty in breathing, and, and now the parent our, may not <laughs> notice. And, and because our, our parents are African, mm. they believe in, uh, maybe this child is, is, uh, is having a cold, so they get a cloth, they cover their neck, or they cover a lot of stuff on this child, thinking it is maybe coldiness. Yeah, which in, in a way is not bad because when somebody has asthma, we don't want them to get cold. Mm. It's one of the triggers that really worsen the okay. symptoms. But beyond just covering the child, if your child is having coughs every now and then, if you really have to buy syrups, if you have to be in the hospital every month, every two months, the problem is cough, think again. It's probably not pneumonia, it's likely to be asthma. So typically we have the cough, like I've explained, yes. it's either going on for a long time. If you like have five children in the home, mm. this one who has asthma will get cough, the others will also get cough, but for the others who don't have asthma, it will clear in a few days, no treatment. But this one will go on and on and on. So if cough comes and takes a long time to heal, or if it's recurring What do you mean the by time, a long time? Uh, what usually the cough may take a week and the child is okay. They, you know, they get a cough and within a week you'll probably give them uh, nothing or a syrup here and there and then they are fine and life is back to normal mm. but for a child who has asthma it may take even two weeks for that cough to clear and sometimes you probably have to seek some treatment for that cough to clear and before you rest then another episode comes so they seem to get coughs more frequently than other children who don't have asthma and these coughs are commonly dry coughs sometimes the parents will come and say my child has a heavy cough mm. Uh, it's a barking cough or it is a big cough something like that. it's not kind of the usual cough mm. yes so that is characteristic but besides that these children will get difficult in breathing or if it's an older child they'll say mommy i'm feeling pain in my chest or i feel congestion in my chest mm. or i feel like i can't breathe mm. sometimes they say i feel i am suffocating yes. So that means inside here it is so tight like you see here so they are struggling to breathe in and out sometimes it is so tight and you really have to run to the hospital when they really can hardly breathe mm -hmm. and sometimes some of the children have what we call wheezing that noise that you know as you breathe mm -hmm. there is a noise that comes yes. in some people say it's like a pussycat mm -hmm. yes some people say it's like a kettle when it's rustling like that so that noise on and off it is because the airways have become very narrow. narrow. But I want to emphasize that most people think that that wheezing is the only sign of asthma. Yes. It only occurs in about 3 out of 10 children. So the absence of that sound does not mean that your child may not have asthma. Is it possible that someone without asthma can wheeze? Yes, there are other causes of wheezing in children. Mm. For example, some children get, if they get a viral infection and they get pneumonia, sometimes they wheeze. There is another type of a disease which in scientific terms we call bronchiolitis, they could also wheeze, but it's not recurrent. So these symptoms don't come this month, next month, the other month like that. Maybe it's one There are short term um, yeah. uh, symptoms. Yes. Okay. But of course, there are other things which we look at when we are interacting with a parent or a guardian who has a child with asthma. Beyond asking about the symptoms, how frequently they occur, we'll ask you, what commonly happens around this time when this child has these symptoms? Mm. And you'll find the parent saying, oh, whenever it rains, I'm on my tentacles, or mm. I'm, I'm ready to run to hospital. Or whenever there is maybe a sports day and there was a lot of dust. Or if there is smoke, we never have AC in our house. Mm. So besides the symptoms, the parents are usually able to tell certain clear things that will bring on those symptoms. Okay. Yeah, and of course sometimes we ask if there are some people within the family who have asthma. Mm -hmm. But again I want to emphasize, even if there is not somebody in your family whom you know who has asthma, it does not mean that your children cannot have asthma. asthma. Yes. Yeah, because I remember Dr. Christine last week told us that it is genetic. Yes. You, 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 can, you have the, the genes, they are only triggered. Exactly. By, the, by the triggers, the various triggers. Exactly. Mm. So you have the genes, or in simple terms, you say that you can inherit, or you, yes. can, you can pass on that gene from mm. one generation to generation. 
And so if that person has those genes, and then, for example, they're exposed to air pollution, or they're exposed to cold, or they're exposed to what we call allergens like mold, like pollen from the flowers, they are the ones, that interaction between your genes and the things within your environment start off a reaction which eventually leads to the inflammation that I So this about. means that if you're not exposed to these triggers and uh, it doesn't show up, it doesn't mean that you're safe. Yes. So you cannot conclude that in our family there is no asthma. <laughs> yeah, that's true. And like we see these days, we are increasingly seeing more children with asthma yes. symptoms. Mm. And we are thinking there are certain things that are happening, like urbanization. Mm. Like if you, for us in Kampala here, there is air pollution everywhere. There is dust, there is smoke. Yes. There are all those things that are within the environment, which if they interact with genes, they will actually make that person manifest the asthma symptoms. So for our grandparents, maybe they were in a cleaner environment mm. or they were in a green environment. There wasn't this much pollution. So they did not manifest the symptoms, but they passed on the genes to the other generations. Okay. Yeah. Well, uh, Doctor, we are still looking at uh, the various symptoms. And uh, you talked about cough and uh, you also talked about uh, the wheezing. Yeah. What are the other ways in which asthma presents? Yeah, apart from cough and wheezing, mm. um, and I emphasize that the fact that they recur, they come and go, they come and go, mm. the difficulty in breathing. So if the child is a small child, the parent will say, my child is breathing very fast, or is breathing faster than usual. And sometimes you can actually see them having difficulty in breathing. If it's an older child, they'll tell you, I feel pain, or I feel like I'm suffocating, mm. or I feel like somebody is holding my chest. And sometimes you have to be very, very keen. Some of these children, when they run around and they are playing and they are happy or angry, then they'll come and they start coughing, 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 that dry, irritating cough. So there are some cases where exercise or extreme happiness or extreme anger can actually trigger those symptoms. Even anger? Yes. Anger wow. is wow. Can be that bad. <laughs> <laughs> Doctor, let us shortly go for a commercial break. This is now something new coming on board. Ah, immediately after the commercial break, we shall continue. Men, who are you? What do you seek to achieve in your personal life? By the way, when did you become a man? And if we talked with your wife, what would she say about you? And when your children look at you, what do they see? Do you know what makes you tick? What makes you unique? What makes you basically you? Are you living a life of impact? Are you living a life of influence? Are you living a life of significance? Introducing to you the inspired family leader, an interactive provocative and inspiring show that is going to challenge, that is going to equip, that is going to encourage men to strengthen their family leadership for national transformation. The inspired family leader with Samuel A. Bakutana every Saturday 7.30 to 8.30 p.m. East African time here on Church of Uganda Family TV. Live, love, Hour of prayer. Let me carry the presence that can chase away demons. Let me carry the presence that can deal with the enemy. Father, we are praying, Jehovah, that indeed your grace will be sufficient for us within this season. Teach them, Lord, what it means to draw near to you, not ask for things. Not present a shopping list, but simply to worship you. We trust in you, Spirit of the Living God. We have confidence in you that whatever we ask in your name, it shall be done in Jesus' name. Every spirit of shedding blood, every spirit of child sacrifice, every spirit of abortion, killing innocent children, I put you down.
we are glad that your eyes are still on Church of Uganda Family TV. Thank you so much for watching Health Thought. This program is brought to you by Makere University School of Public Health. Together with Church of Uganda Family TV and uh, the whole of this month, we are talking about asthma as a disease. And we are glad that we are with Dr. Rebecca Nantanda from Makere University Lung Institute, taking us through the various ways through which asthma presents. Therefore, as a parent, these are some of the things you should look at and know that my child might be having, might be at risk with asthma or might be having asthma. Although, the, I believe that the, the diagnosis, the, 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 the uh, conclusion should be made by a uh, medical personnel, not a parent, after analyzing and you know, looking out, <laughs> looking through what we are talking about here. So, uh, Doctor, we are still continuing with uh, the various ways through which uh, uh, asthma presents. And before the commercial break, we had also talked about anger. Yes. I, I, I wonder how anger connects with, with, with asthma now, with the lungs. And <laughs> yes, so within the lungs, mm -hmm. there are nerves. So this narrowing of the airways is also an action of the chemical reactions that I talked about because of those triggers, the dust, the pollution, but also within there, there are nerves. So when somebody is extremely angry or they are excited, mm. that could lead to what we call bronchoconstriction, the emotions. But also, like for example, when it's exercise, when you exercise, in simple terms, I would say the lungs also tend to kind of what we we'll call sweating. They are chemicals that are produced, and therefore they also overreact with the inside, and then you start getting those symptoms. I'm looking at a situation, you've talked about excitement. Mm -hmm. Some people, when they're excited, they will faint, maybe. Mm -hmm. Or when they are extremely angry, mm -hmm. they can uh, faint. Mm -hmm. Could this be that they might be having the genes of asthma in them or it is yeah. I, I mean someone breaks down because they are over joyous and they know you see them <laughs> <laughs> so it's fainting is caused by so many things mm. it could actually be an illness some people maybe they are extremely angry their blood pressure goes very high and then they faint so there are so many things that can cause fainting so do not conclude whether you <laughs> faint might be having asthma okay. but what we know that mm. some people who have asthma when they get an attack sometimes they faint mm. so the parent will say this child every time they start coughing they get difficult in breathing the next thing you know is that they have passed out okay and we think it is because they are no longer getting enough oxygen mm -hmm. through the narrow tubes. You can imagine if somebody's tubes are this narrow, mm -hmm. it means they are taking in very little oxygen. And for us to keep alive, we need oxygen. We need it in the brain, we need it in the heart, we need it everywhere. So we think that when they are taking in so little oxygen, that can eventually lead to fainting. Mm -hmm. And that's why later on we shall emphasize First of all, I, like I mentioned, it's important to identify these symptoms so that we can treat and prevent some of these fainting attacks, but also to prevent lung damage. I had a parent uh, some time back complaining. Uh, this parent had a child who was asthmatic, but each time this child got an attack, they were, uh, she would faint. Mm -hmm. But uh, sh this child uh, would really hear what is going on. And when she's back to normal, mm -hmm. she tells them everything. And the parent was saying this child was acting. Was yes, it was it was a stunt. <laughs> she was pretending. Yeah. Uh, is that is that possible? That she I was wouldn't pretending say that or? they are pretending. I've interacted with children who are able to speak who have asthma. Sometimes when they know what is going on in the lungs, like I can't breathe, I am suffocating. Sometimes it causes fear and anxiety and somebody probably could pass out, plus the fact that you're not getting enough oxygen. So before you say that your child is pretending, look at the other things that I've described. Does this child frequently get cough? Does, is this child always in hospital? Do I always have to wake up to check on what is happening to this child because they are coughing all the time through the night? So it's not in isolation. That's why when we are making a diagnosis of asthma, it is the story. The story is very important. For some children, it could have started when they were still very young, 
that every time the child got a little cold or flu, like we call it, then they ended up coughing, then you ended up in hospital, then the doctors would uh, treat what we call a nebulizer, mm -hmm. that machine where it's kind of steam coming through, mm -hmm. there is medicine which helps the lungs to widen again. So it is that story we pick from the parent that eventually increases our suspicion that, oh, this child could actually be having what? Asthma. Okay. So it's not isolated symptoms. We put one plus two plus three mm -hmm. until we get the bundle of the things you want to make a diagnosis. Okay. Yes. Uh, this is also very important uh, uh, to, to ask and to get from you. Mm -hmm. When a child uh, is diagnosed and you realize they have asthma, you give them medicine. Yes. Um, does this medicine only prevent them from uh, getting these symptoms showing up every now and then, or uh, this medicine helps to kill also the gene? In <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> so we cannot keep kill the genes. Mm. God creates you, and that is your nature. It is the genes. So as we shall discuss when we are discussing the session on treatment, yes. we want you to live a normal life. Mm. We want the symptoms to go away. We want that suffering to go away, but also in that process, we want to protect your lungs so that they are not damaged. So we will not take away the genes, mm. but we can control that over irritability that eventually causes you to have asthma symptoms. Okay. Yeah. Um, uh, you've partially responded to a question that came in last week after the program, mm -hmm. where someone asked that, um, uh, does constant fainting mean that I might be arithmetic? Yeah, why I say you've partially mm -hmm. talked about it is because you've told us that a fainting comes because of very many things. Mm -hmm. But there is also um, there is also there are also attacks. I think mm -hmm. uh, talk about these attacks, how these attacks, the asthma attacks, show up okay. in in a in a child. So asthma attacks can come in mainly two ways. Mm. There are some times when it is so dramatic. You wake up in the morning, you drive your child to school, or you escort them to school. It is a cold morning. You are behind this truck with a lot of smoke and all those things. And before break time, they call you that your child is very badly off. You left them well. So that is when the reaction happens in just a few hours, and you have to run to hospital. But there are some cases where it's kind of a build up. They start with a flu. Then they start coughing, you buy a syrup here, you buy a tablet here. Third or fourth day, then they start getting difficult in breathing, and then they start wheezing, and that's when you move to hospital. So sometimes it starts gradually, but then peaks to those signs which are really uh, showing that the child has an attack. But sometimes it's very dramatic. And that's why when we come to treatment, it is important that that person who has asthma always has the medicine which we use for first aid mm. because sometimes <laughs> it's just a matter of minutes okay and you need to act mm. yes so that's how the attacks present well this is and uh, april I, I want to actually it's good you've talked about attacks mm. some children even when they have asthma they will never get attacks yeah. you will never have gone to hospital because your child is having breathing difficulties Remember I said some children, their only problem is cough, mm. and they seem to move along properly with the cough. It happens in the night, they sleep, in the morning they are good, they get their bag, go to school, or get the hall, go to the garden, or whatever work they are doing. They are all well during that day. So you keep buying syrups, you buy herbals, you do all sorts of things, but that cough is not going away, it's coming and going, it's coming and going. So those children may not go into what I've described as attacks, but they actually have when we do the testing, we find that their airways or these tubes are also narrow. So that's why I said it's important to recognize some of these things. It's not the typical way which most people know. Mm. There are other ways in which asthma can present. Okay. So even those children need to be looked at by a healthcare worker. Mm. We take the story, we do some tests, and we find out if the child has asthma. And we treat them. Because that child is always coughing in the night, they have disturbed sleep. So in the morning they are tired, they lack concentration, mm. they will not get the D1 that we are looking for. Yes. They will not get the A grade that we are looking mm. for just because their asthma was not diagnosed and therefore not treated. Mm. Yes. And, and now that children are home, most of the children are, are back home. Mm -hmm. In fact, today is the official closure of schools, mm -hmm. 15th. 
But um, I think uh, we also advise parents to take some time and observe their children now that they are home. Because some parents are called, they are home, they call them, your child has an attack. And, uh, uh, Oh, yeah, my child has yes, my child, has, exactly. Yeah, especially if they are adolescents. <laughs> yes. Think that they are adolescents. <laughs> that is active. drama, and, and a parent plays it off. Yeah. And, you know. But I think we advise parents to watch over their children the time they are home. Yeah. Um, uh, what about the SC? Can't the SC in the cars or uh, cause an attack? Can't it be a trigger? Yes, it can for some people. Mm. So the triggers that I mentioned, for mm. some people, they overreact to those triggers other people may not mm. but because we know it is that whole range of problems that can happen or triggers like I mentioned we tell you about all of them so mm. that you avoid them because okay. you never know there are some few tests that can help us identify whether you for you can react to dust or you react to cockroaches or you react to spores but those tests don't cover the whole range of triggers so we may tell you okay according to this test is the dust which is your biggest problem but that doesn't mean that you don't react to other things mm. that are not part of that test so it is important but i also want to emphasize actually something that you touched mm. the adolescents yes please parents listen to adolescents mm. and this is because as a lung institute we've done some studies among adolescents in schools they have problems sometimes they fear to tell you the symptoms because they are not believed so they suffer silently and when a child has those symptoms or gets an attack and waits and buys time hoping that it will go away so that they don't call mommy, sometimes it doesn't happen. So that's when you get a call. And some, some will say even mommy, yeah. she'll not accept, yeah. she'll think I'm pretending. So please listen to the adolescents, speak with them, they will tell you and then they will be able to access care. Okay. Yes. So, uh, doctor, your last message uh, as per as per the signs or the symptoms or the way asthma presents in, in, in children. What is your last message to parents out there who are watching us this evening? I think I want to emphasize the parents and guardians out there that first of all asthma can occur at any age. Even if the child is very young, asthma can occur. And those symptoms that are described of cough for difficulty in breathing, wheezing, they don't all have to be there. They may have some symptoms like cough alone or they may have difficult in breathing and wheezing alone. But very important that you keep an eye on your children. If these symptoms or these coughs are coming every now and then, please think about the possibility that my child may be having asthma and take them to a healthcare worker for assessment. Yeah. Well, thank you so much, uh, Dr. Nantanda. And I also thank you as, uh, as the entire team of Makere University Lang Institute. Thank you so much for sparing this time to come and educate our mothers, our fathers, our guardians out there and to also create awareness because very many parents um, seem to play it off but we are glad that you've come up uh, in such a program to share with us the various experiences and we are still continuing with ATMA even next Friday you shouldn't miss Athma, but as for today, Erin Austin Colors is my name. We've worked with uh, Dr. Rebecca Nantanda from from Makere University Lang Institute, and uh, this program is brought to you by Makere University School of Public Health, together with Church of Uganda Family TV. This is Healthport. I uh, wish you a blessed Easter. I've worked with Jonah Jal, the producer, and in transmission, there is Bantam. Stay blessed.